Hello, uh, September the 20th is the uh, federal election, and you're probably wondering, what are you going to do on September the 20th when all the election... Sit Books. around in your PJs, eat peanut butter straight from the jar. So our suggestion is that rather than watching the, all the news channels and how they cover it, you can join us at CanadianPoliticsIsBoring.com where with an embedded YouTube video, we will be doing a, our own live coverage as the, as the votes roll in and the counts are done. And we've got thousands of listeners on our podcast and about six people actually engage with us on a regular basis so you can be one of those six watching us talk live on the air imagine hanging out with us for a few hours on on youtube live uh, while the while the results roll in it's gonna be a wonderful time you'll get to know us better and you'll see us just struggle to find things to talk about no. while, while the votes are counted. I don't and I'm, most of these elections like end in the wee hours of the morning so are we going to be doing this until 3am as long as it takes Jesus Christ I will be well caffeinated I'm going to get a pizza you can watch me eat pizza it'll be wonderful because I'm keto right then. I'll yeah. get chicken oh my god I'm getting chicken we'll get chicken I'm going to have like greasy fingers and we'll do a podcast with greasy fingers. Greasy the fingers, first, chicken first, and cheese, baby. The first time you ever watch an election where the people talking about the election have got greasy chicken fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that you know of, <laughs> at least. So anyway, join us September the 20th, 8 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time we kick off, which is 7 p.m. Eastern Time and earlier in the day if you live out west. Right. I don't know the exact time zones. <laughs> what do you mean in Canada? I don't know, three something, years. Yeah, but just if you just remember, go to our website. If you're like, I want to see the thing doing the, the live stuff, just go to our website. CanadianPolitiesIsBoring.com. It's on the front page. There's a holding screen for you to ready to click on it. And we are rearing to go. And they'll be checking. <laughs> Welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring! Hello and welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring. My name is Reese Waters and with me is the impenetrable Jesse Harley. Impenetrable! Um, we have a guest and we're going to do an interview with uh, Sam, who is the executive director of Apathy is Boring. Are you excited, Jesse? I'm, I'm just excited to find out why they named their organization after our podcast. Well, let's 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 ask them. <laughs> go. <laughs> in, interview in <laughs> interview three. Go. In three, two, two one. <laughs> interview. Jesus. <laughs> it was actually Satan. That was good. Can yeah. we do that again? I'll do it with you. <laughs> Three, Three, two, two one. one. Interview. <clears throat> Jesse, you don't know who uh, Sam is, but Sam is the uh, executive director of Apathy is Boring. Um, what a coincidental you... title. I know. We, we could you really... steal it from us? Did or you, did we steal this... it from you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been around since 2004, guys, so I don't know. Oh, uh, well, no. you, you definitely win that one because <laughs> we're okay. about 18 months old. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Apathy is Boring, and you can correct me if I'm saying this is this completely wrong and making something up about your organization. You work Recess to support that. and educate the youth to become active and contributing citizens in Canada's democracy. Did I get that right? You got that right. Yes. I feel like we, Reese, uh, do the exact opposite. <laughs> or at least I do. I'm trying to encourage people to to not vote, and which isn't true because you, did, cause you, did, cause you did vote in the last election, and you yeah, actually... but I didn't feel good about it. Nor did I really want to. Honestly, it was. I still kind of feel icky about it when I think back about it. So, so Sam, why should Jesse vote? Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, convince me. Uh, oh, that's a great question, uh, Jesse. Well, I'm not. I'm not apathetic. I... I'm angry. <laughs> I get it. Listen, I, I think that there's a lot, especially in this election, like I think we're all feeling it. There, there's sort of a tone coming out of, not, especially not, the sorry, last 18 uh, months. Not this election, every election. <laughs> every Why are you angry, Jesse? Because it's pointless. It's completely pointless. And it's and I'm, t I'm voting for people who have uh, transformed themselves into public versions of themselves that they have been taught is the best version of themselves to garner votes from this from people who they know continuously vote it's a system that feeds on itself and is uh it, it grows it, people into uh the the cartoon versions of politicians that we have become to know these days that are anything but uh 
that are anything but like human or relatable or vulnerable in any way, shape, or form. And it's a giant wrestling game, and it's it's insane. And the amount of people who want me to care about this is is kind of nuts. And I feel like they want me to care for a system that they hope will happen someday, but does not exist currently. He used to be way more cynical than this, and I've been working on him for eighteen months to care. So. <laughs> Reese, Reese, Reese did get me uh, into a mentality of voting, which is that, yes, our system currently is very, very much broken. And if we want it to be not broken, we need to convince more people to vote so that we can get a much larger pool of swing voters, which would actually instill fear in the current politician or any politicians, which would then allow like a sort of form of punishment if they don't do what they're doing. <laughs> However, for that system to take place, we're talking years, if not decades, well, of convincing let, let, people let, to vote let's so explain. that the system and will let, fix itself. So I basically have to vote right now and convince others to vote in a system that is going to do nothing for me and nothing for our kids for years, years and years. Sorry, it's a. It's let, a let Sam explain. Yes, I'm so, okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. You know Sam. what? I'm, I got on a rant. I got on a rant. No, no. <laughs> so like, I got on a rant. So yes, I agree. We should vote to fix a system that might actually fix itself in many, 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 many years. But to care at the moment for voting, I don't see it. I hear you. I think I, I honestly think that a lot of people agree with you, Jesse. Like I hear this a lot. And I think I don't think it's uncommon for people to be like, what's the point? Right. Because ultimately, if there's an issue, especially a pressing issue, something that feels urgent. Right. And you're you're feeding it. You're 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 participating in a system that doesn't act urgently, except maybe in the last 18 months at a point of crisis where we saw our governments act urgently. Right. And I think that's frustrating for a lot of people to see that. Um, but I will say, I agree with your argument. There is a systemic element. There is a long-term sort of goal around, yeah, getting more people participating in a system. But I don't think democracy is just about voting, right? Voting is, is a tool. It's a part of our democracy. But I think when we overly emphasize voting, we actually remove power from citizens. So if you focus on, okay, the only Sorry, time say that I get again? to participate. Say, say that last part again. If you only focus on voting you're removing the power that citizens have between elections as well, right? Oh, so that's if you think about yeah, if you think about running as a candidate, that's a, that's a an act of democratic engagement, a big one, right? You're you're going into service and you might not like the people that are there now. Probably. But the more people that participate, <laughs> the more people that get involved, yeah. maybe the candidate slates change. Maybe the the political culture changes. We talk about people who are engaging in activism. That's a that's an essential component of our democracy. There's roles that we can sort of all play. The people who are on the front lines pushing dialogue, people who are working at the grassroots level in communities, they're all part of this sort of broader democratic ecosystem. Yeah, I'm will. not I'm not a big fan of activism either, honestly. I, I, no, I like I, he's I, just he's maybe as well just go and live on the moon on his own. No, I'm I'm a fan <laughs> I'm a fan of the of the idea behind activism, yeah. but the actual action itself is akin to a toddler throwing a temper tantrum. No, it like, does work. You can't say that activism doesn't work. Never said that. Some, much the same as a toddler tell throwing that, a temper tantrum. to the suffragettes. On, much <laughs> the same as a, ta a toddler throwing a temper tantrum can also work. It's yeah, not the most effective solution we have. Only if the parents the only, are bad. But it's the only one we're using. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, I, I think there's a degree of people feeling like that is the only channel, especially young people, because young people always driven and and sort of sustained a lot of our social movements right and i think there's a degree of okay if i put my energy there i can actually maybe make measurable change which i think is is sort of the gap that a lot of young people especially see when it comes to like engaging with our institutions because they feel like they're just kind of hitting their head against a wall right yeah, it's like I mean, okay I mean, i'm gonna put energy into this and what what's yeah, coming of it you're right i mean and reese brought this uh, brought this point up before as well which is that uh, if the system didn't work, we would not see changes such as suffrage, such as uh, you know equality amongst uh, like uh, amongst races and sexes and and things of that nature, which has occurred throughout you know throughout time. Those changes would not have occurred if it weren't for activism and weren't for voting. Um, it just feels like an incre incredibly slow, inefficient system. Like it, yeah, I can't it's, deny it's, that change it does happen and change for the good. I can't deny mm -hmm. that. But yeah. it just I feel I can't help but feel like 
it's a really antiquated system and it needs revamping big time, especially today. Yeah, but like it wasn't like the one of the first things ever written was like people complaining about the youth of today, like three thousand years ago. <laughs> and, you know, I think I think th- th- it's always going to be a grind, but that's why people do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because well, honestly, what's the alternative though? I, I think that's where I kind of get to. It's like, okay, we don't like the system. Is is the way to fix it to disengage from it? So as I is, as I would mention, because that's a great question. Um, and as I have mentioned before on our show and to Reese, um, just because I don't know the solution to a better, uh, I don't know a better solution to the problem doesn't mean I don't have the ability to point at it and say, I, I know very much so that that is broken. Much like seeing a car go down the road with smoke billowing out of its hood and it's clunking and the wheels are kind of falling off. I can point at that car and say, I know for a fact that is a broken car. And someone's like, okay, we'll build a better car. I'm like, I don't know how to build a better car, but I can tell you that one's broken. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. And I think, I think it's kind of similar, right? Like we we, I, I look at the pandemic, especially because that's kind of the context that we're in right now. And I think we're in kind of a moment where people have realized how much power governments do have over our day to day lives. Like I, I live in, I live in Montreal. We were, we had a curfew. We had, you know, like our lives were very much changed, especially last winter, but over the last 18 months as a whole, like our, our freedom of movement was completely removed after 8 PM until 5 AM every night. Like that's a very real situation to be living in and you and you realize the 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 power that our governments have and who's in power to make those decisions and the judgment that they exercise in those moments is important so i think whether or not we vote or not like the outcome of that is going to affect you either way even if even if the system is broken even if so so the where i sit i'm like well i'd so much rather us all be participating in that conversation and if and if you do, do or do not choose to vote jesse that's that's totally oh no your I, vote. Decision. I vote it it's be. just i'm not i'm not happy about it <laughs> yeah it, it's fair. I, vote, I vote out it's of a guilt lot of people. and obligation you know yeah. kind of like a lot of people I, on, I, they have family well, reunions I, they don't go to them because they're fun I, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a permanent resident and i can't vote and i really wish i could mm. because like you just want to vote because you can't no, I, <laughs> I've, I've honestly, from the moment I turned 18, I've never missed uh, an election my whole life. Wow. Um, and that's like, you know, European elections in Euro- in the UK, Welsh Assembly elections and UK elections, like there's three different levels that I'd vote in. Um, but um, I just I, I just feel terrible if I didn't because I just couldn't don't feel like I, I would be able to moan. And I like moaning. You do so, like moaning. <laughs> so, <laughs> Almost as much as I like moaning. But, um, <laughs> so what, what, what do you think... Uh, what do you think the biggest challenges are, especially our audience uh, tends to, is, our audience covers like all ages and different places in, in Canada, but um, we do skew quite younger, but w- what are the challenges you find convincing younger Which voters? blows my mind, by the way, that we have a younger <laughs> audience, like, hello, younger audience, thank you for listening to us, why, why we're, are you listening to us? We're what cool, we yeah. are cool, so, um, so <laughs> what, what are the biggest challenges do you, do you find speaking to them that, that, that is a real barrier? Mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly what Jesse is saying. Like, these are, these are the real challenges, right? It's the, it's, and I mean, Jesse votes. So that's, that's good. We're (laughs) we're happy, Jesse, that you're participating. (laughs) But I I think it's that it's, it's these motivational barriers that people face. Why would I bother doing this? You know, and for people with varying lived, lived experiences, that gets even deeper, right? If you've been harmed by institutions, if you like, it feels like sort of an endorsement for the status quo for a lot of people. There's also people who really just don't understand it. It's a pretty inaccessible system at times, right? It's like even listening to campaigns, it's confusing. Talking about issues that like that hit multiple levels of government and understanding what the federal government can do versus the provincial government. Like we're, we don't have great civic education in this country. We really and don't. It's certainly not consistent. It's terrible. And so what's happening is people come out, they're confused. They feel like they're being misled. In some cases they are. Um, whether deliberately or not, if they don't understand how these things work. And so, and so there's a lack of sense of belonging, a lack of trust, a lack of um, faith in that, in that system to actually address the needs that they have. And, and it I think understandably so. I think like, like, yeah, it's not, I, I, it's, I don't not think a, it's a like, dissolution. This is, this is the reality. Yeah. This is the reality is that I think for us, what we try and do is try and support young people because uh, we're nonpartisan, so we're we're not interested in, in in having a specific outcome to an election, but we do want to make sure that people's voices are heard in that process in the system that we do have. So we're thinking about 
why don't politicians or, or candidates or parties or whoever engage long term with young people? And that's not just talking to them during an election campaign, which is important. It's what policies do they prioritize once they're in office? How does that work? How are they communicating that back to their constituents? They're not. And there's not, a, <laughs> yeah, and that, that's it. There's not a sustained investment in ensuring that young voters or electors or, or permanent residents who are interested, which is amazing, by the way, Reese, because that's really cool that you have a Canadian politics podcast and you're a permanent resident. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's real. And he's but, teaching me about it. That's well, the, the idea is I'm, <laughs> I'm only one lesson ahead of Jesse. So. <laughs> about ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's really it, it makes him seem like an expert it, it, which is yeah hilarious no so, but but you know what my mom my mom is actually american she only got her this is she only got her canadian citizenship like four years ago or something so my whole life and, and as soon as i could vote my mom was really big on on getting us to vote but she tried to get us to vote the way that she wanted us to vote so it was like this whole dynamic of like okay you can vote <laughs> But I think you should go and vote for this person. Oh yeah, that, it, I mean that makes it, sense. It's like though. those parents who wanted to be like famous singers and they never got to be, <laughs> and they try and force their kids to perform on stage and relive their broken dreams. Yeah. She wanted to relive yeah. her democratic, uh, democratic uh, rights through you. <laughs> I can't, stage I can't mom, them. stage mom syndrome, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, when I spoke to Andrew from your organization, he was telling me about some of the cool stuff you do to engage young voters. Mm. Talk, could you tell us a bit about what you're doing? Maybe. Je might get Jesse more excited. I don't think that's possible, but we can. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure, but we'll try. Um, so a lot of our approach is really just focused on um, meeting young people where they already are. So this is kind of a uh, a bit of a gap in our system. To Jesse's point, like you have a political rally and you expect a non-voter to show up. Like it's just, it's not going to happen. So we focus on spaces where young people are. Typically what we do in a non-pandemic context is we do street teams, we go out to events, and we just get young people talking to each other about the issues that they care about, about the election, and, and kind of try and model that engagement a little bit differently, because it does hit a bit differently I'm, when it's coming from a peer. Right? I'm sorry, can you, can you back up a little bit, and can you just mm -hmm. kind of paint, I'm trying to picture this, I'm having a hard time, can you sure. paint a picture of one of those scenarios? Like, just kind of spell it out for me, like you're like approaching a group of youth outside at an event and telling them they should vote like what this is yeah, yeah, yeah. hey this i really hope you're cool enjoying right the concert <laughs> <laughs> by the way like <laughs> can you hear have me? you checked your registration on yeah. election schedule <laughs> no um typically typically what we do is we'll we'll table so we'll set up a little area we'll have signs whatever we try and make it like it's youthy and, and attractive but we also have merch we also we make sure you know what i mean I like you know, know. It's, it's engaging Okay, I, th I think I think no? I think Jesse's being too cynical. Because, way too cynical. Because way too. But that's it, my job. But you've I, got to go where young people are to actually talk to them. TikTok, yeah. Instagram, <laughs> I'm YouTube. No, sorry, this is sorry. So you, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that, that's well, I'm I'm getting to that part. Okay. So okay. the other the other piece of that is we do a lot of like digital campaigning and resources. That's great. Development and we share a lot on social media. How because, effective? How effective have you found that to be? Out of curiosity. Well, we reached about a million people in the last election campaign oh, so wow. we're doing pretty well that is that's amazing. Yeah. amazing well done yeah. that's amazing okay that's so, really impressive yeah we're focused on creating things that are kind of funny and engaging and and but also have that informative aspect to them and we we work year-round right so election campaigns are like our super bowl or whatever but wow i mean ultimately we're running programming on the ground year-round um we bring young people together in communities to focus on sort of developing initiatives locally mm -hmm. and focusing on on that work as well but during an election it's especially this time largely digital we've been doing virtual events um trying to not well so there's the aspect of okay you're you're not sure how you're going to vote let's help you make a plan making a plan is like a big thing because actually psychologically once you've committed to doing something you're more likely to do it yes so we, we try and help with that and then we encourage young people who've already done that step or have already decided that they're going to vote to then go out and talk to their friends so we do take a bit of a decentralized approach because we recognize that relationships of trust and and mm -hmm. i mean this is a really whatever example but you think about like instagram influencers and how good they are at selling stuff i think part of the reason that is is people you have to it's true and make a good it living does work. And why that is the influencer market it is massive Oh golly, Jesse, I've got some great news. We've had a fresh delivery from the ad man. Gee whiz, Reese, really from the ad man? 
just smell them. They're fresh. <laughs> oh, the ads. <sighs> influencing marketing on on buying rapid kind of instant decisions is much better than uh someone trying to convince you to spend a lot more money on a much larger investment like hey buy this t-shirt because i'm pretty that's yeah, yeah. that's easy to do rather than hey you know get a mortgage you know? yeah but, <laughs> like, but voted is okay. like getting a mortgage is, that's is true very, yeah, is yeah. much easier there's a lot it's more closer to getting a t-shirt yeah so. if and if voting was <laughs> if voting was as easy as uh click this button and you're voted digitally in the next 15 to 20 seconds then I think influencers would have more of an impact. Whereas voting is yeah, like yeah. you physically have to go down to a church basement somewhere. That's a good point. We, we bank online. We do pay our taxes online. We could, you know, is voting the next step to engage young people? There are some countries who have done it. I think the concern is always, and like Elections Canada, I think is quite big on this, is paper ballots and they're counted by hand. Yeah. So there's a security element to that. So I think we're probably quite far away from from online voting um i know some countries switzerland being one of them has that option for some of their referendums but they do vote like three or four times a year because they have a direct democracy which is kind of a different um they vote on everything don't they they, <laughs> they yeah yeah it, it's inter it's a really interesting system wow um yeah there you go um well i gotta say i'm they, quite i'm quite they, impressed with the with the efforts that you guys have put out to engage with the youth i, I didn't know all all of those uh different types of engagements and how effective they were. Um, I'm impressed, honestly. And I think um, if, honestly, the reason I've talked about this before, if politicians were to take the same sort of direct online approach as you guys have in trying to just get youth to vote and to be engaging, I think they'd have a much more, um, a much easier time. Like it's, reason I've talked about this, and this is a pet peeve of mine with politicians of today, at least politicians in North America, and sadly including Canadians, uh, Canadian politicians, is they come across as inhuman. They really, truly do. They they come across as a corporate entity trying to appear Not everybody. human. Oh my God, everyone. Remember the episode we did on Norm Kelly? Norm Kelly was great. Remind me again. Maybe he's the the um the politician who got big on tick um, Oh on yes, Twitter. that's right. Yeah, you know, yeah, not yeah, every yeah. Norm I, Kelly was yeah, but Norm yeah, Kelly wasn't a, running. No, no, he's retired now. He's retired, but yeah, yeah, but, but he like, was. But if if you know Justin Trudeau had a podcast and was on TikTok and was on Instagram and was on YouTube, right? And he came across as relatable because he was vulnerable. One of the number one things I'm convinced they if you're a politician, they, they it's almost like they sit you down to have a class on how to never appear vulnerable ever because you must become infallible in the eyes yeah, of the but public. I, I'd argue I think Trudeau is actually bad. You, some of his best moments that people remember is when he's not he's off script and he's just interacting absolutely naturally. yes you know, exactly yeah. so and it's they're being taught to not ever do this you know what the like, more they can do that the better definitely if yeah, yeah if you can appear vulnerable if you can appear like you know i don't know it's human just, human <laughs> freaking human yes sam you know. um what gives you hope? sorry sam what, what gives i you went hope? on a rant i do <laughs> no, that no. hey listen it's all good <laughs> this is all these are all really important conversations and i think that like the way that i look at it is that democracy like in its smallest little unit is just these conversations that we have about what we want to see what's not working what is working what our hopes are all of those things so i think what you guys are doing is really important and addressing what like, we're these doing? concerns that you have yeah we, we talk about justin trudeau roasting babies on a fire i don't think what we're doing is important i just like to put that joke into context we make fun of Q <laughs> okay. we make fun of queuing on people who say that he does that and we've got a running gag so we don't actually to fill you in on the backstory behind that joke like, it's a very dangerous rumor start i don't yeah, know yeah. it's a very dangerous in joke that our listeners get so. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my question was what gives you hope which i think is an important mm. question what gives me hope i think that i'm always consistently amazed and and i think there's this kind of big narrative that young people don't care especially young people but lots of different groups of people they don't vote they don't care whatever and i'm consistently consistently seeing young people flip that narrative and do it anyways um, and maybe not in the numbers that we'd like to see. And, and, and I think there, there needs to be kind of a continued investment there, but every day I have, I've never met a young person who doesn't care about anything. 
So I think you have I think worked hard enough. The... <laughs> <laughs> He's so cynical. No, no, no. Listen, so... listen. They do care. Listen, I, 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 li- I like to joke, but I talk about like my my when I was like 16, 17 years old, my my like guy friends. I grew up in a pretty small town outside of Montreal. And they used to sit there and they used to complain about the roads. We have the worst roads in Quebec. I will put that out there, especially in Montreal. And they used to just complain, but you'd listen to them and they'd get all amped up and they'd be like, you know, it's just, it's the concrete. And they, they had like a 10 point plan about how the roads and bridges could be fixed and whatever. You can laugh and say that that doesn't matter, but that's infrastructure. You have like 17 yeah. year olds caring about infrastructure. So it's wow. ultimately everyone cares about something. Yeah. Right. And so I think that it's just about us making those connections and getting those people into places where if they're motivated, they feel that they can make a difference. Um, so I'm optimistic. I think that we're, we're watching Gen Z come up. Like they're so engaged. They're so interested. They care so much. And I think that ultimately if that is channeled in the right direction, I think we can, we can see some of the changes um, that we're hoping to see and that they're hoping. To see. Mm, um, I'm yeah. optimistic. Jesse, Jesse. I, I, I just want to apologize for Jesse <laughs> and his skeptical. attitude. No, man, this is. I mean, yeah, yeah. Jesse, look, the thing is, though, you like Reese. I'm telling you, man, a year and a half ago, before a year and a half ago, you came at me with about, I'm going to say, ten to twelve different podcast ideas, all of which I agreed to, and none of which <laughs> we went through with. And then finally, you settled on this one, and I said, "No effing way, am I doing a politics show about Canada?" And you insisted, and here we are. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I kind of, I, I think that your cynicism is important because you do need cynics, so you need yep. people to stand, you know, on on the on the on the edge, like pointing out things the way you do. I guess, I guess, for me, my position is that um I, I i don't know i, I guess i guess I'll, I'll, you you're very good at visual metaphors so i'll give you one so well, imagine, you. imagine there's a huge dam okay and i like where this is going already and you're in you're you're in uh there's no way of escaping even if, if the dam breaks you've got no time to run away okay so oh, even good. even if you did run away it's very michael bay if the dam breaks it's going to affect you right so you can either stand there and put your finger in one of the holes with everybody else to try and fix the dam slowly together or you can run away and whether you, this math was terrible. No, I like it. So oh, this so is great. If you yeah. don't vote, you're one of those people who's just stood by the dam and you haven't bothered putting your finger in or trying to repair it or to fix it. Right. Um, uh, and you don't get a say, but those people repairing the dam are the ones actually doing it. And your fate, um, you'll be affected by the outcome of that dam, whether you take part or not. So, I mean, it really does feel like a damned if you do, <laughs> damned if you don't scenario. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I was too proud of that. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good. But you, so no, it, you, you can't you can't ignore it. It's it's always going to be there. And, yeah. it, and if you if enough people ignore it, then you slip into you know a minority rule where you can go mm-hmm. down the path of authoritarianism, or you don't and you don't get a say, and then it's too late because you've lost that right, which happens. Again, I, I, yeah, like it's. I I agree with you, but I don't think that the change that the two of you are talking about, if we get people to like, Hey, if you vote, you'll, you'll make a difference. I don't think they will make a difference today or this year, or even this decade. I think change would happen decades from now. If we continue to convince more and more and more and more people to vote over the course of the next decade, then positive change may occur. Was, and that's <laughs> the only way positive change will occur. Sammy makes it seem like going to vote is really tough and a really hard thing that like you've got to lie on a bed of nails while they pull petrol. No, on it's you. not a physical and, problem. And, it's <laughs> a mental, it's a mental, it's a mental <laughs> anguish. It's the fact like voting like is very Sam, easy. Like Sam is saying, it's not just the act of voting. It's, it's everything you do in between. And it's the conversations you have about voting in between and who you're going to vote for and the research that you do for it and the the mental anguish you you can feel all year long or many many years of nothing i do matters you know it can affect you on a, on a, a deep personal mental level you know and being taught by our government and by organizations that yes your vote does matter and please go and vote and then you finally you get the courage to go okay you know what maybe they're right and i will go and vote and you go and vote and it still doesn't make an effing difference. That, and then you got to do it again the next time because, like, if you like, it's yeah, it's it kind of makes you feel like you're going crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, am I, am you know I what, Jesse? <laughs> I, I hear someone who cares very deeply listening to you, and I and I think that I've had a lot of um, caffeine. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sorry, please but... continue. That's the thing, that's the thing though. Je- Je- Jesse does simultaneously care a lot and is just frustrated, yeah, I think. I'm very that. frustrated. Yeah. I'm very frustrated. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Cause, cause and I, that's the thing. Yeah. Go ahead. No, please, please continue. I've, I've talked enough. <laughs> no, no, but I think, I think it's, it's telling that frustration and whatever. I, you know what? Even though you didn't want to start this podcast, apparently on <laughs> politics, you've done it and you've done, you've created a space where people can laugh and, and, you know, decompress a little bit and, and listen to you guys chat, chat about, you know, the system and, and all of these things. And I, and I think that's important. I think what you guys are doing is important. Um, and it's a way for you to, to voice these concerns and have people hear them and be like, yeah, me too. Uh, I also feel that way. And, and, and that, that's important. That's also like talking about that democratic ecosystem. Like you guys are doing it. You're saying you're not an activist, but you've, you're creating content <laughs> and creating a podcast. No, 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 but, <laughs> J- J- no, but listen, like you're giving voice to concerns that a lot of people have. And I think that's important. Well, and just so, just so you know, Sam, as well, like Jesse, he doesn't think like that, but we do have listeners reach out and say, I like listening to Jesse because he sounds, because if they're into politics, he sounds like somebody that um, doesn't, you know, doesn't engage and they, they find his uh, opinion interesting because they're so into mm-hmm. politics and they follow it. They like it, like to hear the comments of someone who doesn't care. But then at the same time, people who aren't, who care about voting um, also can relate to Jesse's voice on the show too. So you are an activist. You don't get a choice. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my sign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th- uh, thank you so much, Sam. Um, uh, where, where can where can people find more information out about um, Apathy is Boring? Yeah, so you can you can check out our website. It's apathyisboring.com. Um, we also post a lot on Instagram, at Apathy is Boring, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you know your what? preferred social media platform. I don't want to end the podcast just yet. I want to ask you another question, Sam, if I can. <laughs> okay. If you do have time, if you, Sam, if is you that have okay? time, do you have an extra uh, minute? I got time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I just feel like I talked a lot on this show and I feel bad about that. And I, no, really like I, I, I tend to, it's I your to show, go, Jesse. I got one rants, but we've, we've got this amazing guest on. And so what I'd like, the question I'd like to ask you, and I'm, it's kind of a serious question. Okay. Is, and I know we kind of touched on this at the beginning of the episode, which is, you know, the things you can do aside from voting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, you know, writing your MP or, you know, even like running yourself, uh, you know, researching different topics and stuff like that, as we kind of briefly touched on. If someone, if, if a, a ute were to come to you today, so a I, ute, I just watched uh, yeah, my cousin ute. Vinny. So it's, uh. <laughs> <laughs> if a youth <laughs> way to engage with a younger audience. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> if someone younger, actually the hell with it, not even someone younger, if literally anyone at all were to come to you, Sam, and mm-hmm. and say, I don't feel like anything that I do, not just voting, but writing my MP or, you know, getting involved in activism it, it, in, or voting. I don't feel like anything that I do actually makes a difference. If, if your platform is simply getting people to engage and to vote, right, what would you say to that person to convince them otherwise that, yes, it does make a difference? Because... To me, it genuinely, and I'm, I'm guessing to many, many, many people out there, it genuinely doesn't, it's not a feeling. It's almost like empirical evidence that it doesn't make a difference, right? And we're, and we're being taught to feel a different way instead of being shown data that it actually does make a difference. We're being shown data that it doesn't make a difference. And we're having people, God love you, like yourself, who are saying, no, but it really does. Just, you just got to go do it. Like, and we're not being shown, like, I feel like we're not being shown evidence to the contrary. And, and I don't want to step on your feet. I, I thought want you said you have, you've done enough talking. No, I want her to have a platform to <laughs> convince me and others differently. And I'm stopping talking yeah. now. <laughs> um, it's a really good question. It's a really important question. I think that it's normal. It's normal to feel like, I think we, te- we have a tendency, or maybe the, I'll speak for myself. I have a tendency to sort of think about, okay, I'm going from zero to a hundred. I, I need to be like, I'm doing nothing and I have no impact or I'm, uh, you know, prime minister of Canada. There's nothing in between or I'm, you know, and I think one of the things that's really important to remember is that the little things that we do, like start locally, right? So if you feel like you're not having an impact on the country, well, okay, hmm. fine. You're not having an impact on the country. That's fair. But you probably have friends 
or family or people in your community, um, things that matter to you. You can start there. Start with your friend who does or doesn't vote. And it doesn't have to be about voting. It can be about anything. You can be really passionate about your local community garden. Like, go do that. You can have a measurable impact in a small way. And those things build up, right? Because then you learn. You learn the ecosystem. You learn the norms. You know how inaccessible, like, I, someone who's never watched a parliamentary session before turns on question period and it's like, what is this? Why are all these people yelling at each other? Like, it makes no sense. But there's, there's a way of engaging in these different spaces. And sometimes we have to learn them. So finding someone that you trust or admire and being like, hey, what are you doing? I want to do that too. It, and, and building it, it could be volunteering with a community organization. It could be posting on social media. It can be whatever, whatever feels comfortable, whatever your talents are, whatever your skills are, whatever your interests are, starting there. And you can sort of build it up over time. You don't have to go from zero to 100. And voting, I think, should be a part of that, but not everything. Because I think when we focus on it being everything, then yeah, of course you feel powerless. It makes sense. But there are so many other things that you can do. And that's what a lot of our work is focused on sort of between elections. Is, helping young people sort of develop the resources and capacity to, if they see something wrong, know how they might go about addressing it. How do you get funding? How do you, how do you get money to do projects? All of these things are part of it. Um, what government agency do you go to if you have this issue or that? Like there, there are other ways. Your city hall probably has consultations all the time. They're terrible at advertising them, but they exist. There are ways that you can go and speak to different people within the institutions, but also outside of them. So that would be my pitch to you, Jesse, would just be to start start locally, start small, start with the things you're good at and that you you know you can contribute. And it builds confidence and the sense of belonging over time that I think allows us to actually build to that point where you're making the bigger change. Wow. That was awesome. <laughs> no, I really I Oh really... my goodness. Look at uh, that. I well like, done. you I... get you get a gold star, Sam. That was amazing. No, that was a really well thought of like lucid argument that was uh I, yeah i enjoyed that thank you okay. that's the thing as much as jesse yeah, is cynical he does uh if you have a good argument he does tune into it don't you yeah I, I, he I, does you use know. logic which is great <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh good no and like i said jesse i think there's so many people that feel that fus that frustration that you have and and i think it's, it's really important to try and unpack that and it's so deeply felt like i it's hard in a couple minute conversation to like undo years of feeling that way but yes. i think i think it's about starting you know starting small no That's you fine. you make a I really think. really good point in that if you want to see like your actions have any kind of impact whatsoever start small uh which is a mm -hmm. great point that's a great great point um because if you start small you can see like oh wow i did have some sort of an impact in in some way shape or form you know and maybe yeah. through doing that you'll you know learn that like it take yeah okay no that's i like that no i like that a lot you did it sam you've given him something to chew wow. on wow uh, you have yeah. Yeah, yeah if you so in our in our show we have a, a call to action where we ask instead of like because everyone on social media they're like just like and subscribe and hit that share button and, and hit the bell and blah, blah blah and nobody does it because it's just overwhelming for too many things for audience members to do at once and it becomes white noise so what we do is we pick typically we pick one thing just one thing usually reese just instantly goes to instagram he just blurts out instagram and that's all we yeah but like if you were to direct our audience members uh to to go do one very specific thing at the end of listening to this episode what would it be go vote okay um but and Elections Canada offices, advanced polling is closed now. Okay. So you have election day. You have the 20th. You can go on that day. Please do. Okay. So if, so if this came out on, so, all right. All right. So yeah, we, yeah. is there a website that like very specifically, or do you just want them to like, you can tell people to go make a sandwich? Like what right now after listening oh. to the podcast, like what do you, yeah. You know, like still oh, vote, I imagine. Still. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. <laughs> 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 I'm, I have a very one one track mind right now. Um, go vote. Yeah, there is yeah, an election. Go make, there your, is an election go make yourself a go make yourself a cup of tea. Oh, that's good. rest, oh, relax. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Oh yeah, be hydrated, yeah. ready for when you exercise your democratic right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Tea. I there like you that. Go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Sam. This has yes. been amazing. Thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate. Thank it. you, Thank you so for getting through to Jesse. Oh, stop it, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> Team Reese. <laughs> Team Reese. <laughs> Team Reese. <laughs> <laughs>